So the people ask for the hot ones, and I'm going to eat the hot ones right now. So I'm nervous, you know, because you got to eat the spicy wings. You know, and I'm nervous about that. And you got to have a conversation while you're eating. So that's really, you know, that's next level, really. We'll see. But they sent a nice car for me, so that's beautiful. Look at this. I don't even have any friends in here, but we have room for them. Got this human taint right here showed up. I'm gonna kick you off the camera and take your spot. What is this guy? It's right up a knot. You are really obsessed with this world domination, brother. <laughs> this is my world and you're in it. Jesus Christ, dude. Where are your parents? So we're getting ready right now. And this is Julia, right? Susie. <laughs> Okay, and so that's what it's. <laughs> Very close. That's the exact <laughs> moment what it's like when you don't get a woman's name right. You're an asshole. Okay. What is that? That's nice milk, isn't it? Uh, fair life. Uh, fair life milk, and those cows are treated well. I guess. I'm scared. Is there a pastor or something that comes? I'm freaking nervous. Has anyone ever cheated and just pretended to eat the hot sauce but not even done it? No. Oh, we not confirm or deny that. <laughs> oh, we may have had a cheater yeah. on hot ones. Wow. The fans will know, though. Okay. Yeah, they'll know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm kind of nervous to meet this guy. You've never met him? I don't think so. I've never met him either, but I've seen him at the comedy store a couple times. Does he seem like a nice guy? Seems like a really nice guy. Yeah. Now, one way I prepped is I didn't eat. I had half an omelet early this morning, and it was only about seven bites worth. So, so I'm taking it easy. I'm trying to hope that my appetite will help get me, will help compensate the burn a little. Cause I got tender lips, dude. I got swimmer's lips. Do you think uh, your dad would watch this if he was around? Yeah, probably. He'd be 108, but I think he would. Wow. I'll bet you 20 bucks you don't eat the hottest wing. That's right. Hmm. I'm just doing that as your friend to motivate you. Mm -hmm. I want you to finish it, but I don't think you will because you're a big pussy. Jesus Christ. Christ, dude. Sorry, excuse my language. A, a, a scary it. cat. No matter what you do, you're not going to shit your pants like Bobby Lee. Dude, how many different places is that guy going to shit himself? I mean, I don't know if he does it on purpose or accident, but figure it out. Dude, I shit myself two times in a month, bro. I'm going to the hospital. This dude's milling around America to shit himself. Yeah. What's up, I'm Theo Vaughn, and I'm gonna be this week's guest on Hot Ones. What's up, Theo? Sean. What's up, John, man? Nice Hot to see you today, man. Nice to see you. I'm feeling ready for the heat. Second six. Okay, good. You know what you're getting yourself into? I'm gonna rearrange my chromosome, dog. You know what I'm saying? Man, I feel like a, feel like a damn breech birth. Well, look at that. Mouth after that Hot Ones. Oh, yeah, what else? I'm surprised you're able to talk after that. Whew. Look like I just met a man outside of a damn Shoney's. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yep, thank you so much. Have a good day. Well, we did it, man. You did it. But I'm cool. I got to be there for it. That's cool. Was it fun? Yeah. So this is the repair. Look at that. Your mouth gets all hot, hotted up after that heat, boy. Nah. Man, look like I just lost my wing genity, bro. And my eye feels hot. This one feels like it's got some heat in it. So, gang, gang, man, uh, uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. So, I'm grateful that I got to do it, man. And just have a neat, fun moment like that. And, you know, be included in, you know, some of the other stuff that other people have gotten to do. And so, I don't know what some of my thoughts are, um, but I had a good time. Penguins. Men present the women with a pearl. With a pearl? Yeah, I believe that's how they find it. They find like a pearl or something, and that's how they propose to their ladies. Really? Yep, I think so. Wow, bring that up. I'm pretty sure, I believe it's a pearl. They definitely find something. I was you watching an animal show one time, and they like went to the end of the earth to find their thing to present their lady. I think you were watching maybe Ice Age or something. I think it's something like that. Using a pearl to propose? I think so. Because I'm not seeing anything on that. Maybe not a pearl, but definitely something. They, like, they have to find something and then give it to the lady, I'm pretty sure. How do penguins propose to one another? Oh, with 
Pebbles. Pebbles, sorry. Mm. A, a, a less fancy pearl. It's a very good point. That's all a pebble is, dude. Yeah. A pebble is just a pearl. It finds the smoothest pebble. Isn't that nice? Romance. People think romance is that, huh? That's a good point, isn't yeah. it? During courtship, a male penguin will find the smoothest pebble to give to a female as a gift. If she likes the offering, she'll place it in the nest, and the two will continue building up their little pebble mound in preparation for the eggs. That's actually beautiful. I didn't know that. that yeah, I'm going cry right now. I didn't know that that was their beginning of the foundation for their nest for their eggs. That's fucking cute. Dude, that is so romantic. That's romantic about, as hell. Because first of all, to even be a penguin, right, and balance a little pebble. Yeah, and they, and they don't, it's not like they look down at the pebbles there. They got to go find the smoothest pebble. Yeah, and first of all, how do you even lift the pebble further? Because you can barely even look down, I don't think. A penguin can yeah, look. Gotta, so you have to almost get the pebble way up here, look at it. Maybe kick it. Yes. But then how do you test if it's the smoothest? Oh. How about that? Penguins are wild. <gasps> look at the one of them giving it to the other one. Wow. With the beak he gives it. Dude, it's like when Harry met Sally. Man, that's some that's amazing. Is there something else really romantic that happens in nature? See if you can find some some of nature's best romance. Because the only other thing I've seen is that lizard, that guy who's like a total perv that mm -hmm. like puts like the big fake. Yeah, thing. that's the only other thing I was gonna say as well. There was I'm pretty sure in one of those shows I was watching one time, I think it was some sort of a bird. He literally put on a, a, like a so you think you dance esque performance <laughs> yeah, for yeah, his yeah. lady. Like he <laughs> literally, it was unbelievable. He looked like. It looked like Chris Brown. Like, he was crazy. <laughs> it did. And then I think he actually <laughs> the woman when they come over. <laughs> yeah. So it really had a but lot. But he really of, popped off on the dead. A lot was, of sea brown. It was beautiful to see. There. Flamingos dance for their love. Take us through that, Zach. Yeah, there's a this article lists a couple examples, but flamingos dance for their love. I guess in separate groups, um, they strut together in search of a mate. Seahorses, I guess, flirt a lot. Horny. Um, yeah. Wolves. Wolves mate for life. Now that's interesting. Wolves mate for life. Yeah, their packs are generally like nuclear families that comprise an adult oh. male. Oh, damn. Dude, did you possibly see that um, that story out of Vegas about a month or two ago that uh, some sort of dog, I, forget, I think it was not, it wasn't a bulldog, I think it was maybe a pit bull, was adopted by a pack of wolves outside of Vegas and mm -hmm. became their leader. Really? Yeah. Damn. Animal Control found him and took him back, but he became their leader. He was the leader of the pack. Wow. They didn't kill him and then let him become the leader. Huh. Yeah. White dogs spotted dog. living with Coyote, Coyote Pack in Nevada rescued. Apparently he became the leader of the crew. Wow. Parents in shock as gorillas mate in front of kids at zoo. A pair of gorillas at a zoo left parents shocked as they decided to start doing it like they do on the Discovery Channel right in front of the kids. When you take the kids to the zoo to see all the wonders of the animal kingdom, you've always got to understand there's a risk that all creatures, great and small, will be up to some naughty antics. I love this. Hell, I think the zoo could charge more for animal sex hours, honestly. If you come at 2 p.m., that's when everybody's fucking. You know what I'm saying, bruh? Because you go to some of these cages now. You go to the lion cage. He's in there. He's always sleeping or he's laid out or he's on, looks like he's on a couple zannies, you know. They always got a kickball next to him. You, who's ever seen a lion play kickball? What fucking lion gets up and he's like, Rawr! then you see another lion run up and just, and the other lions are like, Rawr! kick it, kick it. It's, there's no fuck, that's, what do they do? They're not doing anything. And then, and there's always like a tightrope in the cage going from like one tree to another. Like the lion, like the lion's just gonna like, oh, just like walk on the road. Like, oh, I'm a, I'm a, a rope lion. I'm a tightrope lion. Rawr, fuck, what the fuck? They don't do shit, man. I'm sick of paying entry fees to see animals not do shit. They don't do shit. These animals don't do shit. They just lay there like rich animals. That's all they are. Because we took them out of the wild. The wild is where God is out there setting it off. And Mother Nature's out there fucking twerking. 
and people are eating BBQ and getting gunned down. But we take them out of the natural environment. We put them in this rich ass fucking maximum or minimum security prison. And they're living large. They're kickballing. They're eating lamb. They're, I saw one video. They're feeding lamb to lambs. I'm sick of these rich ass animals. That's all this is, man. Have you ever lived in a shitty neighborhood and then moved to a better neighborhood? Have you ever moved from Memphis to Nashville? Okay, that's what's happening with these animals. And people are like, well, we, we got to set the animals free. No, we, what? If we set the animals free, every penguin will be at, in, at Albertsons in the frozen food section. You'll have every penguin in there fucking just, just beating open a thing of fish sticks. Every leopard will kill every missing pet in your area. There will be zero missing animals. You can't free, you, you can't free these animals, man. Because they'll be right back in nature. They'll be right back in the wild. And the wild, the wild is gangster. That's the UFC for animals, man. These animals, they have it good in the zoo. They got it really, really good. So I say we either put them to work or tell them to take a four-legged hike. I want to go to the zoo and they got, I want to go during, they should have animal sex hours in the afternoon. 2 to 3 p.m., everybody fucking. All right, $40 to get in. You t that zoo would be packed. That zoo would be, even the French would be there like, but we got to get these animals to work. The, these zoos, they're not making any money. Nobody's going to see the. You could watch a nature channel, they fight immediately. The Dana White should do the nature channel. These bitches fight immediately on the nature channel. So these animals, I think they either need to step it up or get the, hey, that's what I'm saying. I want to go to the zoo. I want to see, uh, you know, I want to see, uh, I want to see the end. I want to see these apes fist fighting. I want to see the rats making soup like they do in the movie. I want to see um, penguins miming. Why aren't penguins miming? You got the colors. Do the fucking work, boys. But zoos could easily step it up. 2 p.m., all the animals fuck. That's easy. 2 p.m., all the animals fuck. $40 to get in. Bring a rain slicker. Boom. Now we're talking business, baby. But I think if you go to the zoo and see some animals fuck, lucky you. All right? Just make sure that you have a conversation with your son or daughter afterwards to explain what happened and that they shouldn't feel ashamed for watching it. When I was a kid, I thought jacking off meant you were gay. Like, yeah. I didn't know that that meant that you just were a regular person. Right. And so I lived with that until I was like, until I was 18 years old. You were jerking off thinking you were gay the whole I thought, time. I just thought, wow. I must be gay. I can't stop. I must be one of those weird gay guys that's only attracted to women because mm -hmm. I don't I'm only jacking off the chicks and I'm hooking up with chicks. I had sex with a chick, but I can't quit jacking off. And then we got into our fraternity and they said something about jacking off. And I was like, hold on, you guys, you guys do that? And they're like, everyone does it. And I was like, where the fuck was this open and honesty? Yeah. Like, where was this my whole entire fucking life? And they call it jacking off with the yeah. word like a name jack in uh, it. No, that's when they started calling it rubbing one out. Oh, oh everyone really? rubs one out. Yeah. And I was like, rubs one out. And they're like, yeah, you know. And I was like, Dude, Eddie Bravo said they people would just uh, used to say play with themselves. Yeah, and that it was totally normal. What you gonna? What, what's going on today, man? I'm probably gonna just you know have you know have some cool lady, maybe play with myself, or maybe you know get a new harp or something. Dude, I wish that that had happened earlier for me growing up because it was I, I really was like I must be a pervert. Yeah, there must be something wrong with me. Like I don't, I don't think I ever really like at a certain age you go I'm definitely straight. I'm I'm sleeping with I, I had lost my virginity to a chick. All I want are chicks. I remember the first time I felt a chick up in the bushes. Remember when you go back into the bushes? Oh, yeah. And just make out and just hold, just play with their tit a million different ways. You're like, I've been waiting for this day my entire fucking life. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, Oh, dude, I remember some girl didn't want uh, me to, 
she was like so nervous about like God, I guess, seeing us touch each other or whatever. We we're in a sand trap on a golf course, right? Yeah. Oh shit. She was God so nervous. Damn it. She took her fucking pants off and everything, and then like tried to cover as much of her body as she could with fucking sand, right? So then I don't even th- I'm still I'm young, dude. I can get through some sand for some crotch, you know? Like, yeah. this is, you know? Yeah. This is fucking, you know, I'm fired up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I could probably shoot semen through a fucking wall of sand at that time. As a, still golfer hit a vagina. Say, as a golfer would say, she was a fried egg. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'm playing with this, you know, touching this girl's crotch with sand everywhere. And it was, yeah. it, you know, it ended up kind of stopping the scenario. And she, and, and, and she didn't, you know, she got... I don't want to say sick, but she had to, you know, talk to her mom and stuff a bunch after that. I got a sandy hand job one time in Clearwater Beach. Did you? Oh, oh yeah. every hand job is sandy down there, dude. Yeah, dude. Bro, you, you can't keep sand off your dick south of uh, north of Destin. Oh, just rubbing the skin off, and you just were like, "Just it'll be over in a second. We just got to get yeah. through this. This is the hard part. This is love. This is mile twenty of the marathon. Here we go. Here <laughs> we go. Love. Come on, <laughs> dude. Yeah, fuck yeah. God, I miss those days. Like when, like you're when, like you were like you get so excited to touch body and you'd be like oh my god oh yeah like i remember the first time i fingered a chick i was on wow secret time i was on i was in the haunted house ride at disney world in orlando and it was the part where like and i just i never thought about it i never like i was in eighth grade and i was like we're making out on the ride and i'm playing with her boob Mm. and then all of a sudden i just was like let's see if this works Mm -hmm. and it just went in so quick (gasps) and like it just it just worked it just went yeah and i was like whoa and then i didn't know what to do with my finger and i just left it there like i was taking her temperature yeah just left it in there like yeah pretty nice huh that's swaggy dude and she's like huh and i'm like yeah okay. You're <laughs> that's, about an old, that's an old doctor <laughs> move dude dude bro i remember one time i was in i was doing a college show somewhere this is like 10 years ago and afterwards, I was drinking at a house on. Uh, I was drinking at a house, right? Yeah. And I didn't know the house was on campus, but the police show up and they say this house is technically on campus. It didn't look like it was on campus at all. It was like a regular house. Yeah. It wasn't like a dormitory or like a, you know, um, a quadruplex or anything like that. Um, so the cops came, took me to jail, right? And there was this girl I was flirting with, and I was like excited, maybe I get to you know, hook up. Well, anyway, I get back to the hotel where my buddies are staying in the morning. The girl slept over. She hooked up with my buddy, right? Yeah. And um, and he had broken both of his. He had two broken arms though, so my other buddy had to hold him up while he was fucking her. Like he, like he, like laid on, got on top of her. But then my other buddy, who was real strong, like Adonis, like yeah. leaned over and just held him up the whole time <laughs> by his chest, yeah. so he could just like dangle his arms, like because my buddy was on top, like he could just dangle his arms and still have <laughs> sex. And then me and the girl ended up having sex, dude. And she had the darkest bush I've ever seen in my life. Oh. And it was like three or four inches long, and it was straight. She was like black. She was African-American, but just kind of in the pussy. Just, and it was um, just, the just the hair was just very, you know, it was, it was more of African type of hair, you know. And it was just so exciting. It was such an exciting time. And that was up in um, Binghamton, I think. I remember, I remember in uh, my junior year of high school, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no, no. It must have been sophomore year of high school. We're at Ty Rodriguez's house, and uh, and everyone's everyone's hooking up. Like yeah. it was just a bunch of girls, bunch of guys. It's just like you know, it's just like fucking like I think they what did they call it like uh, makeout fest or something. And then the next morning, we're all eating breakfast, and uh, everyone's like, "Did you hook up?" I was like, "Yeah, I, I made out pretty fucking aggressively with I'm just saying a name like Jennifer," and yeah. they're like. Uh, they're like, really? And my buddy Sean Hooker goes, at what time? And I go, oh, what oh, an asshole. Probably like nighttime. One. And he goes, You think it was one or more around two? I said, Well, I don't know. It was right before we all went to bed. And they started laughing. I go, Why? And he goes, Because she was sucked my dick at midnight. Wow. <laughs> and I was like, Huh. Oh. And that's when everyone's like, So wait, what's Hooker's dick taste? I shouldn't say his name, I guess. Well, fuck it. What's Hooker's dick he taste? Knows, like? Yeah. <laughs> He knows, man. Wow. But yeah, those fucking times you're like, oh God, this is going to make me into a comedian. I guess I got to have a sense of humor about this shit. <laughs> I've never been a cool dude with chicks. I wish. Really? Never. Never. I could never turn it off. But do you, Oh, I could see that. I was always trying to be funny. Even when we got back to the room, I, I just couldn't turn it off. Really? Like, yeah, I get uncomfortable. And, and then like leaning in for a first kiss. Oh, dude, that's like, 
it's almost like talking a different language for me. Like to be able to like go from what this is right here, like this energy right here, yeah. which will work. This works with a chick. Yeah. Like hanging out, making her laugh, get back to the room, and then going from this to yeah, slow. Dude, remember how whenever you were young, <laughs> what face is this? Oh yeah, okay, <laughs> crazy dude. Yeah, that's crazy. It's like oh. kissing a fucking lizard. And I kiss with my eyes open. Oh really? Yeah, yeah that's insane. I'm scared dude. the shit out of some chicks before. <laughs> 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 And then they open their eyes like, what the fuck? And you're like, what? What? But dude, that heat, bro. I remember, oh, I remember we played Spin the Bottle at this party and like the prettiest girl in our town, dude. This girl I had the big, I was in love with this girl. Her name was Emily Baumgartner. And she was name. gonna kiss me. And I could just, I got this weird feeling. At first I thought that she had to vomit and I had to vomit at the same time. <laughs> I didn't know what the feeling was, right? But later on in life, I realized that means we kind of were into each other. Because I was like, what are I the love odds? That, I love that your first kiss. It is a weird, like a, yeah, the one the other was just, and then you're like, oh no, I'm getting sick. <laughs> like, oh my god, Theo, that's fucking brilliant. The, f oh my god, that's so fucking brilliant. The, she goes in to kiss you, but it does look like you're about to be sick. Like she's like, <laughs> and then you're like, oh, I think I'm gonna throw up now. Oh, do you want to get a bucket? Oh my god, because <laughs> if I see someone throw up, I throw up. So, so... And then we just put each other's mouths and the fucking forces collide. But no, I, what well, for me it was. There was something going on between us, and she liked me. Yeah. And I thought whenever like we looked at each other, we there was this weird feeling, and that's when I thought we we're both gonna vomit. Like I was like, oh, something. Does she have to vomit? Maybe I some. You know, it was just uncomfortable. But then it was time to kiss, like the bottle spun or whatever. And then I was like, holy shit, I'm gonna fucking kiss like the girl of my dreams. And I didn't know how to kiss anybody, dude. And as I got closer to her, my mouth kept opening wider and wider up because I've seen <laughs> something on television, right? Yeah. And then I literally just wrapped my whole fucking mouth like around her kind of mouth and chin. Oh. And, it, and somebody laughed, dude. Some little fucking imp. Some little fucking Mulan bluebird. What would you rather have? You ready? Yeah. What would you rather have? I'd rather that she had an Instagram so that I could see her once in a while. Because oh. she doesn't. She doesn't? There's no pictures. She could be deceased. And if she is, I'm really sorry to her family. But I've never <laughs> seen any pictures of her online. I've, I've looked everywhere. I looked for the black kid in my neighborhood last night. Did you? Yeah. I looked for him. I think I found him. He's front. We have two mutual friends, but mm -hmm. and I think that that and then he lives in Tampa. But I was looking for him last night. Mm. I just woke up, had a dream about him and his sister, and uh, and I and I looked him up, and I I think I got him. I, I his dad's on there, but his mom's not on there, mm. and so I'm like, his mom might have passed. But uh, what would you rather have? I uh, there's no question for me to go back in time mm -hmm. and re-experience your first kiss mm. or go back in time and re-experience the first time you had sex with someone first kiss yeah fuck first sex first kiss marie koval seventh grade we were up in my bedroom our parents were downstairs having like a dinner party mm -hmm. and we were just messing around and i was on my back and she was on her back and we were listening to music and she oh, just rolled yeah. over rolled over i think we were head to head she mm -hmm. just rolled over leaned over and started kissing me like upside down and i just do my tits got loose like yeah. just shaky and i lost my stomach mm -hmm. and then i was like uh, and then i heard my sister bert mom and dad want you and marie to come downstairs and i'm like oh yeah dude i and by the way i kissed her probably like four times mm -hmm. and every single time felt like a first kiss yeah oh dude i remember there was this girl named chrissy hunt when i was real young and she could have been seven or she could have been fucking 40. And she, um, the first time we kissed, I think she had blood in her mouth for some reason. <laughs> and it was because uh, her teeth were all banged up. I don't know what happened to her. She may have been in a wreck right before we kissed. And, uh, but she had blood in her mouth. And I remember thinking that that was crazy. And then years later, um, but I remember, oh, the kids in the neighborhood kids would lock us in a room together. Really? And we weren't allowed to come out until we kissed. And it was just the hardest fucking thing in the world, bro. It was like, I was just, because I knew, we both knew we had to. And I had to do something. I was supposed to like be the man, you know, but I couldn't be the man. Yeah. And I'm in the room and all I want to do is kiss her, dude. And I'd usually been humping my pillow at night. And my buddy would come over and we would practice humping our pillows. One of us would have a whistle and blow it on the other one if he was doing like bad moves on the pillow. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Way too hard. Yeah. Kind of rapey. Back off. Back off. There you go. Back it off. Yeah. Mutual corners. Mutual corners of the bed. <laughs> Wrong hole. Wrong hole. Le there you go. Up under. Up under. Whoa. Feathers. Feathers. <laughs> feathers. Feathers. Stop. You're fucking the feathers out of there, Stop. chick. But it was fun, bro. And then I remember in uh, junior high school, finally, I got to 
and date a girl and she looked just like a boy. Everybody thought that she was a boy. And uh, we would kiss like at the, the school bus would come, but it would come from the older school where all the older kids were. Yeah. And me and her would be standing there like waiting to kiss every time. We would always just end up hugging. And then somebody yelled out one time, just kiss each other, you fucking, and use the N word ass, dude, right? <laughs> and we were both white. And we're like, fuck, we got to do it now. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. people are getting us racially confused. They're starting to hate us so much. Yeah. So we just started making out. <laughs> Oh. So, dude, it's just crazy, the power of racism, dude. The fucking <laughs> I love it. it. That's what you draw out of that story. Bro, and then I'm making out with this girl that looked I mean, like a boy. The power of racism just overwhelming. Whatever. I, dude, it made me make out with the girl. I dated like, her for four years. Yeah. <laughs> then we dated her for like a year. And she always wanted like baseball clothes and stuff for like all like uh, the dances and all like dances. She wanted us to wear like baseball shit. Oh, cleats. I went through a tear of lesbians, like oh, dating I lesbians. See that. I went through a tear of them. I could see that. I, I had a period where I was, I would date a girl and then immediately they'd come out gay. And I'd be wow. like, God damn it. Is it me? But it's not me. I think that I was just that. <laughs> yeah, dude, I was the first you. step. I, th I was the I was the least threatening of what they were looking for. You're like John Lovitz in a League of Their Own. Just every time he goes <laughs> there, he just pulls the lesbian out of. <laughs> <laughs> When I worked at this place called Dakota Wine and Feed, I would save up. They had a rich place, dude. <laughs> when I was in high school, I went to live with this family and had a re at the edge of the neighborhood. They had a fancy little uh, sandwich and liquor shop called Dakota's Wine and Feed. And they had, dude, they had all type of cheeses in there. They had Groyver. They had damn um, Saint Cyr, you know. They had that bouillabaisse. base. They had all kind of fucking shit, French shit. I mean, let's be honest. Stuff that's fancy is French. That bouillabaisse, base, bro. That brie, Gravere. Before that, if I ever even heard one of these words, it was usually like kind of a middle name of like a black friend of mine, you know. Oh, that's fucking Jerry Gravere Jackson right there, you know. Oh, that's Shantisha Bree Crandall, you know? So these before that, that's all it was. But now I'm hearing they had these different types of meats, man. Prosciutto, fucking lamb. I didn't even know people was trying to eat lambs, dude. Where I'm from, you would never eat a lamb. If you saw a lamb, you'd pet it or look at it while you're trying to go to sleep. And then you get over into these fancier areas and these bitches are eating lambs dude first of all lamb uh number one animal in the bible how about that maybe don't eat it maybe don't eat lamb just for the sole thought that you know they say the lamb of god maybe god's trying to drop you a h-i-n-t on what not to h-u-n-t you feel me don't kill lambs and then you go to these fancy neighborhoods and they eat, you know, and they got them lamb scallions and fucking, you see some rich dude, he's driving a Corvette and he's just throwing chunks of lamb in the air and his little son, little Fauntleroy the fifth, he's catching them in his jaw. And they out here eating the, eating the damn, just fucking, just nibble snacking on the Lord, doing 45 miles an hour in a school zone and probably wearing shoes made out of damn chocolate. And that's who they are, boy, rich people. So anyway, I would work in there and I would save these pieces of, um, I would save up all the nice stuff off of those, the things that rich people didn't need. I would save it on one plate. And at the end of the night, I would make me a big ass sandwich, bro. One huge rich hitter, dude. And I'd pick up that big, huge sandwich, bro. And just take a bite of that thing and say, one day I'm going to have me something nice.